I have been learning C++ for over two years now, and I have gone from literally knowing nothing to simple console programs, making my own engines, and even working on C of Thieves. This is two years of C++. I started my journey all the way here at the bottom of the food chain. I knew zero C++, never touched it, and never planned to. <clears throat> but plans changed, because I applied to university, and turns out, I now had to learn it. Make a game, make another game, and then low-level programming. Wait, let's slow down a little. I started by attending lectures that taught me C++. Let's just say this was really boring and I was not getting anywhere with it. So I decided to go home and practice what was taught in those lectures. It was really simple things at first, like outputting text to the console or checking for input. But I was actually doing it. I was technically programming in C++. I did this for a few months, but it got to a point where I wasn't going anywhere. I already knew the ins and outs of writing texts or trying different algorithms. Thankfully, in time came a new semester where I would now have to make a game with C++. Now, my small brain at the time didn't comprehend how this would work. You see, I thought you needed game engines to make games. But turns out there is other solutions like frameworks. And so I started using this thing called SDL, which basically allows me to turn this console project into a window that now can check for input, have graphics, audio, and more. At the end of the semester, I had created a simple Pac-Man clone, but I learned new things like how to make a text level editor, how to save high scores, create different AIs, pathfinding, etc. At this point, I was pretty confident with C++, but that was all about to come crashing down with the next year of university projects. Yeah, you read that correctly. I needed to now create my own graphical application. For those who don't know what that is, I have to first create a window that write 100 lines of code to render a single square. Scrap that, we now need a cube, which means another 300 lines of code. F then we need to create our own shader. What even are shaders? How do I make shaders? I don't know. Then we needed to do... Ah! So, um, I did in fact complete the engine. Eventually. I made a video about it for those interested, by the way. But here are some screenshots and videos of it working. But, guess what? My professors are clinically insane. And now I have to do all of this again. But this time, instead of just graphics, I have to add physics to it. Okay, so like, again, I did eventually do this, and I guess let's make this video slightly educational. Here is a list of features I implemented. Most importantly, I was happy with this thing here. Anyways, this was actually a massive step forwards in me learning C++, since now I was no longer just using the base console project, instead I was using things like DirectX, OpenGL, etc. If you yourself want to be doing these kinds of things, then today's sponsor Brilliant is the answer. Now hang on, give me just one minute of your time. Brilliant is essentially just a platform that you can access through your browser. You go on it and learn. But not just by sitting there and listening to boring talks, instead you are actually physically doing things, which, in my opinion, is the best way to learn. It has lessons from maths, data analysis, computer science, of course programming, and much more. All of the content on Brilliant is also crafted by people who know what they are doing, because there is teachers, researchers, and professionals from MIT, Caltech, Duke, Microsoft, Google, and more. Learning a little every day is one of the most important things you can do, and Brilliant helps you do that. With fun lessons you can do whenever you have the time, and they don't have massive time commitments. The platform has a ton of different content from getting familiar with Python, learning essential coding elements from loops, variables, to nesting and conditionals. Brilliant has it all. So if you've ever had the slightest urge to learn programming, maths, or anything of the sort, today is the day. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free, for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash Zyger. Or click the first link in the description. You'll also get a 20% off of an annual premium membership. And now let's continue. Okay, this is where the era of engines 2.0 came. Being perfectly honest, those engines were kinda shit. I mean, look at them. So to avoid any embarrassment, I decided to try and make them again. Plus, I was kind of forced to do another graphics engine by my clinically insane lecturers. Love you, really. Starting with the graphics engine, this time I used something called OpenGL to make it. Which, at the time, I'm not gonna lie, I hated. I actually love it now, but I guess we all grow as people. 
The engine not only ran better, but also kind of focused more on shaders. I created things like a Fresnel Glow, kinda, a metal shader, a mission shader, even this noise shader. Oh, saying the word shader so many times doesn't make it sound real anymore. Anyways, video available on that too. Now, I also recreated my physics engine, because honestly, that one was the worst one. I don't know how to explain it, but this new version was just better. <laughs> The entire structure was much nicer, I cleaned up a bunch of my calculations, particularly with the collisions, so now I could have a bunch of collider objects working, almost flawlessly, and I added a couple new features here and there. I'm currently also working on another physics engine, this one is the 3.0 version, so video on that soon, maybe. So after completing those two engines, it was getting kind of boring, so I decided to make, well, an engine again. But trust, this one's different. Drum roll, please. A voxel engine. Yikes, that was kind of underwhelming. So this engine was like a combination of the graphics engine base mixed in with voxels. At this point, I didn't know anything about voxel engines or how to make them, but it ended up being a lot of fun. Painful, but fun. I am most proud of this project because it's just awesome. More notably, you can place and destroy blocks, structures, etc. It's all procedurally generated, and it has its own custom render distance system. And also, although it generates blocks from like Y100 to 0, it only renders the top layer so that your PC isn't fighting for its life. Of course, if you break a block, it will render the ones below, but it essentially only renders what you can see. I also made a video on it here. At this point, I applied to a bunch of internships and kept practicing my C++. After some companies got back to me, I attempted and completed some of their programming tests. And honestly, these tests taught me a lot, since with some of them I didn't even know where to start. I eventually got my job at Sea of Thieves, and I've now completed that and I'm in my final year of university. Before I end this video, due to popular demand, many of you guys asked me about more information about Sea of Thieves and my role there. So here is a little talk about it, oh, and some random background gameplay. So my role at Sea of Thieves was of a software engineer intern, and no, that doesn't mean I run errands or hand out coffees. I do actually program stuff. The difference is that my load is much smaller of a non-intern, plus I have less responsibilities. I was in the gameplay sector, so my primary jobs were programming actual gameplay stuff that the players see in the game. But without breaking any NDAs, I did also do other things that weren't necessarily gameplay stuff. About half of my time there was spent working on The Legend of Monkey Island, Tooltale. I'm not sure how much of that I could say, but it was super fun. I got to create a new weapon and some other cool stuff. I'd love to actually tell you more about it and what my day-to-day -day was like, but I can't really talk about it, or at least I don't think I can, because of the NDAs that I signed. But yeah guys, this is the end of the video. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like and subscribe. And again, if you guys want to learn something new, then check out Brilliant with the link below. Bye!